If you are new to VOR navigation, I recommend you start with Garmin G1000 VOR navigation example one, which will also provide additional videos to watch to help aid you in understanding VOR navigation. What if you are flying and you decide you want to track to a VOR directly, but you don't know which radial to take? Well, if you remember from the prior VOR navigation example videos, when you have the CDI needle pointing to a radial and the D-bar is centered, you are over that radial. We are going to take that knowledge and use it to our advantage to go directly to a VOR. In this example, we have departed the Bowling Green Airport and are flying around the area and decide we want to head directly to the Hallsville VOR at frequency 114.2. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the dual nav knob to set nav1 to the 114.2 frequency. Then I'm going to use the NAV frequency transfer key to move the frequency from standby to active. Next, I'm going to press the CDI soft key to set the CDI needle to VOR1, which corresponds to NAV1. Now I'm going to rotate the CDI needle with the coarse barrel knob until the D-bar centers with the needle and we see the two arrow. The D-bar is centered here, but it's the from arrow, not the to arrow. That's not what we want, because we want to go to the VOR, not from it. So we will continue to rotate the CDI needle with the coarse barrel knob. Now the D-bar is centering with the CDI needle, and we have the to arrow. This is what we want. It's telling us we need to fly a 230 degree course to go directly to the Hallsville VOR, although we may have to adjust our course just a bit to compensate for winds. So let's look at this again from the standpoint of the chart. The CDI needle is telling us we need to fly the 230 degree radial to go directly to the VOR. So we need to turn to that heading. Right now we are going to handle the turns with the heading bug using autopilot for recording purposes. But you are welcome to just turn with the yoke if you want to try this on your simulator. So currently my heading says 270 degrees. I'm going to rotate the heading knob until I reach 230 degrees. Now notice, because I'm a little late in my turn, the D-bar has displaced off to the left of center, indicating the 230 degree radial course is a little to the left. So I'm going to turn about 10 to 15 degrees past 230 degrees, which turns the plane to the left to get the D-bar back to center. and notice it is beginning to center. So I'm going to set the heading back to 230 degrees to see what the D-bar does. I see the 230 degree radial course is now slightly off to the right, so now I'm going to go about 3 degrees to the right at 233 degrees with the heading bug and see what happens. I 
I decide I want to turn a little more to the right, targeting 236 degrees to try and get the D-bar back to center. What's going on here is I am making adjustments for winds to stay on the 230 degree radial course. You will find you need to fine tune your course heading to make slight adjustments to stay on the course you want. In my case, I found that I had to fly at around 233 or 234 degrees, or in other words, point the nose of the plane slightly to the right of the 230 degree radial course to keep the winds from blowing me off course. You will get good at making these adjustments as you practice. Now notice the HLV or Hallsville VOR is showing up on the inset map. This is confirmation we are correctly tracking to the VOR. Now notice as we get real close, the D-bar starts to swing wildly, indicating the sensitivity is really increasing because we are very close, and then it disappears along with the two arrow. Now notice since we just crossed the VOR, that we have switched to the from side as indicated by the from arrow. Subscribe to this channel to learn more.